should we reverse engineer the brain? That was the question my 15-year-old son was asked for his freshman engineering class. On one hand, I'm impressed that they have high school students thinking at this level. On the other hand, this frightens me as I consider the possibilities of where this may go in the future. Let's, be, let's begin this presentation with a bit of history. All right. Our journey begins with a glance back in time to the visionary Charles Babbage, who, born in 1791, laid the groundwork for analytical machines. Babbage's work, while not realized during his lifetime, paved the way for modern computers. Ada Lovelace, often hailed as the world's first computer programmer, expanded on Babbage's work. She collaborated with him to translate a critical article on his machine, significantly expanding its content and making it available for more research and to become a reality in the future. Alan Turing, he was born 75 years after Babbage's only public presentation of his work, transformed Babbage's dream into reality. In his 1950 article, Computing Machinery and Intelligence, Turing asked, can machines think? Turing's work marked the birth of artificial intelligence and introduced the Turing test to determine if a computer can exhibit intelligent behavior that is indistinguishable from humans. His work has been so monumental to the field that the Turing Award was established in 1966. This is information directly from Turing's 1950 article. Um, I wanted you to take a look at this, just read through it for a minute, pause it if you need to. But Turing pondered the idea of machine thinking stating that this question would evolve in significance and wrote that no harm can result from including well-established facts in addition to conjecture. And I believe we're at that point. Um, we need to make sure that we have opinions voiced, concerns voiced, and make sure that we have all the facts before we move forward with any more AI development. Also in Turing's 1950 article, he offered several um, objections, assumptions, and arguments to artificial intelligence as we know it today. There's the theological objection, he heads in the sand objection, mathematical objection, argument from consciousness, argument of disability, and then Lady Lovelace's objection, the nervous system argument, and informality of behavior argument, all of which are worth reading, thinking about, because they're all still relevant today. All right, well, I can't do a presentation on artificial intelligence without including names of people of influence. Um, you'll see many names on the next two slides, but I wanna just highlight a couple for the sake of time. So in this slide, uh, Notable figures like Stephen Hawking have expressed concerns about the potential dangers of unchecked AI development. Interestingly, Hawking began using AI with his voice automated machine in 1985 and is considered one of the most intelligent people to walk the earth in our lifetime. So the warning that I will show you from him in just a moment is one that we should uh, take notice of. Secondly, the uh, the name here, Yoshua Bengio. He's a prominent AI researcher and has advocated for a pause in AI development until global regulations are established. I'll share the link for this petition with you near the end of the presentation so that you can also advocate for safety measures uh, to be put in place before more AI work is done. Also on this list, Yan LeCun testified in front of the Senate this month, um, actually September 19th, 2023, to talk about the dangers lurking with AI and the need for regulation. You can watch his testimony and others at the Senate Intelligence Committee website. Let me give that to you again. Senate Intelligence Committee website. Just look that up. You can Google Jan LeCun's name and also see that it's, it's more than two hours, but it's definitely worth watching. All right. So Elon Musk, you've probably heard of him. 
He's also considered one of the most influential people in our lifetime. And he is um, also concerned about artificial intelligence. He specifically says, I think there's a real danger for digital super intelligence having negative consequences. And he said, if we are not careful with creating artificial intelligence, we could have potentially a catastrophic outcome. He also said there is a risk to the public and anything that is a risk to the public needs a referee that referees the regulator. In other words, we need an overseer for the overseer. So once we get the regulations in place, we need layers of people that are monitoring that and making sure that what's expected is what's being done. Stephen Hawking explained that primitive forms of artificial intelligence have proved very useful, but I think the development of artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. Once humans develop artificial intelligence, it will take off on its own and redesign itself at an ever increasing rate. Humans are lim who are limited by slow biological evolution couldn't compete and would be superseded. And then this last warning that I'll show you is from Alondra Nelson. Alondra Nelson um, is the key advisor in the field. She worked with the Biden administration and has put in place a blueprint uh, for artificial intelligence at the government level. But she warns us that self-regulation of companies doesn't work. We can't do this on our own. We are living already in a time of profound uncertainty with looming risks about AI. She also says we are building a powerful technology, perhaps the most powerful technology that we will have built in our time on this planet. We need to do it with guardrails and a real clear sense of pitfalls. We are worried. There are looming risks all around. It has the potential to exacerbate many things that we are already quite concerned about. So I think you get the point here. We are concerned about the future of AI and what that can mean for humanity. So who should have the power to decide the fate of AI? How can we know what is right, what is good, what is moral, and what is ethical? How can we agree on this? Well, I think worldview matters. Um, as my son and I did research on the question of reverse engineering the brain, I was surprised to see the first two articles confirm that one, we don't know how the brain works and also alluded to the fact that scientists are working with a basic belief of evolution, not creation. So not surprising, but we need to just come back to the basics here. In other words, we have a man worldview versus a biblical worldview debate. And without agreeing on this foundational point of view, how can we regulate something as important as artificial intelligence? How will we all agree on our true north, our moral compass? Will we use the Bible as a starting place? After all, as Christians, we are told that the greatest commandment is to love God and love people. If we keep that front and center, as we work with data, we work with artificial intelligence, we work with governing authorities, maybe we have a chance to make this good. We also have been told that we have dominion over all creeping things that creep on the earth. So the question becomes, how far do we let AI go so that we can still have control over it? Well, these are questions that need to happen. They need to happen soon. They need to happen at a world level. Now, I want to give you um, a case study just as a quick, a quick reference. So using movie and television ratings as a case study, the evolution of media regulation mirrors the challenges we face with AI. We need a globally agreed on moral compass. So the movie and television ratings are not the same today as they were when we were younger. We can probably all agree on this. The reason for this is that the first show appeared in 1894. It involved a woman twirling her dress, showing her legs, and showing her underpants. It was the first movie that caused a debate over what was acceptable and decent in society in the world of entertainment. In 1897, there was a fight shown in Nevada. Well, in Nevada, fighting was legal, but then they took the film and tried to show it in 10 other American cities. Seven of those cities rejected it, deeming it was illegal for viewing. We cannot have AI regulations acceptable in one city and not the other, or in one state 
and not the other, or even in one country and not the other. We need an agreed upon regulation that begins with an agreed upon moral compass and an agreed upon true north. In 1907, the chief of police had to say uh, what was permitted for movies and what was not. In 1909, New York shut down 660 theaters due to reprehensible material. This led to the National Board of Censorship. In 1915, the U.S. Supreme Court stepped in and said that motion pictures was a business and didn't fit within the freedom of speech, so it could be governed with a rating system. In 1922, William Hayes was assigned the task of creating a list of do's and don'ts that included forbidding motion pictures where men and women were in the same bed together, illegal drug traffic, trafficking, and ridicule of clergy. This became known as the Hayes Code and ultimately the National Legion of Decency. The Catholic Church stepped in and started writing films in 1934. In 1965, the National Code or the National Catholic Office for Motion Pictures used a rating system where C meant condemned, B was objectionable, and O was morally offensive. But in 1980, the regulation was shut down after providing ratings for more than 16,000 films. We cannot entrust AI regulation solely to traditional governing authorities. They've had mixed success. And frankly, we just can't afford that. While the rating system is minor in comparison to what we are facing with AI, it shows a steady stream of interest from 1894 to 1980, and the repercussions of ending the oversight are seen today. We cannot afford for that regulation of AI to be left up to the same governing authorities that we have had regulating movie, movies in the past. We cannot expect the same people in charge of regulation of the internet and putting safeguards in place for protecting children from human trafficking or violations of data privacy that they will do a good job with AI. We've seen failures in the past and we just can't risk that with artificial intelligence. As Christian leaders on a mission to change the world, we must actively participate in shaping AI regulation. So how do we get involved? Well, we are Christian leaders on a mission to change the world. We cannot sit idly by and wait to see what happens. Instead, we need a seat at the table to lay the groundwork for AI regulations that promote national security and safety for all people. Are you ready to embark on the journey of reverse engineering the brain? Or do we need to establish some regulations to safeguard humanity? Well, I think we better put some safeguards in place quickly. <laughs> All right, when searching for an article on AI and the Bible or Christian or biblical as keywords, I came up empty. Instead, I found an article titled Islamic Philosophy and Artificial Intelligence. In this paper, there's a call to action for more, more participation from the Islamic community. So I'm now encouraging the Christian community to join other faiths in voicing concerns and shaping AI ethics. I want you to do your research, publish your papers, um, get your insights out there and be advocates for a Christian perspective in AI. I also want you to stay informed. Um, stay informed about AI developments by following the Turing Award recipients. Here you can see all the, the recipients from 2016. Just Google that and you'll be able to find the list. Um, I also want you to see the Times magazine 100 most influential people having these names from both the Turing list and the magazine will help you to see who the movers and shakers are in this field all right so i told you i would give you the link to sign the petition so use this link to sign the petition to halt ai experiments until we have appropriate national security measures in place in conclusion, while AI holds great promise, it also carries significant risks. As Christian leaders, we must actively engage in shaping its future to ensure our safety and that of future generations. Thank you for watching and God bless.